fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> day in Smith Corners. The village drowsed in the hot sunshine, but shortly after noon, a herd of cattle appeared in the distance. Caleb West saw it as the Longhorns drew near the outskirts of town and... wonder where that stock's coming from. You any idea, Sheriff? Nope. I didn't know of any ranch located north of here. Downright odd. Uh, hey, Sheriff, ain't that the Bar J brand on some of them? Why, darn, Caleb. That's what it looks to be. Bar J, sure enough. And that's the Bar J Dulap. Thunder. Bar J ain't no cattle to bring here now. Old Blake was robbed a few days. Caleb! That there's the cattle that was stole from Blake. I'm gonna have a talk with them hombres at the point right in there. Look out, Sheriff. Hey, what the that stampede that cattle? Hey, you blame fool! Stop that shoot! There's the sheriff! Let him have a couple! That's Pete Broken. Stand where you are! Sheriff! Sheriff! <laughs> Hard riding two gunmen opened fire on the sheriff and Caleb West. Both men sprawled on the ground while the frightened cattle thundered into the very heart of the town. Stampede! Get the cover! It's a stampede! Look out! Shoot anyone that shows! Cover the boys in the bank there! Guns roared whenever a townsman showed himself. Part of the outlaw band worked their way into the bank and forced the door. Once inside, their leader shouted a command. Don't leave. No one know who we are. Clean them up. Please don't shoot. Hands are tough. Now clean up the bank. Make sure we don't overlook no cash. He ain't in favor of slipshod work. Kill them, Sacks. Don't talk so much. While grim-faced men looted the bank, other members of the gang broke into the express office. Old Ma Healy faced them courageously and... What's this mean? Get out of here, you... All right, boys. Take that Wells Fargo cash, that bullion from Gold Curry. Make it fast. Pete can't keep that stampede going all day. Come on, boys! <laughs> Smith Corners mourned that night. Twelve people were dead and nearly a hundred wounded. There was more work than the town's one doctor could handle. But suddenly an Indian appeared. He volunteered his services and even the sheriff was impressed by his skill. That'll do, Tonto. I can bandage that wound cell. Uh. Who's calling on you, Caleb? Who's there? It's me, Ma Healy. Is the sheriff in there, Caleb? Come on in, Ma. Take you live, it's a wonder you wouldn't stay around the scene of... Why, Sheriff, 
Where'd you get that wound? Evening, Ma. He took a bullet from the Brogan outfit, first hit town. And run into town to get there right after things had happened? Why not? And worked all this time with a slug in your hide? Why, Dad Ratchet, you need somebody to see that such foolishness don't kill you. I didn't have time to get patched up then. Uh, but how are you? Oh, fit as a fiddle. Oh, that's not true. You hit by a bullet. Oh, shucks, Indian. That didn't do no more than give me a headache. But not near the headache this Brogan outfit causes. What are you aiming to do about him, Sheriff? That's what I'd like to know. I seen a couple of the snakes. I could describe them. That's why I hunted you up. Ain't no use, Ma. No use? I thought you wanted descriptions of all of them that you could get. That is last week. Things have changed. How? Brogan has fetched outlaws from half a dozen states into this part of the country. He's holed up in the Badlands, and it'd take more than an army to get him. What? More than an army. That's what I said. He's got a regular fort up there, Mo. Surrounded by rocks that stand 20 foot high. Why, he can sit there inside them rocks and spout a man coming 10 miles off. A dozen men inside there could stand an army off. You know where they're at? Yep, there ain't no mystery about it. And you can't get them? Mo, there ain't but one thing we can do. That's to set tight and hope and pray that from now on, Brogan will leave Smith's Corners alone. And let the skunk get away with all he done today? That's right. But what about the army? Doggone it all. Move the army here and let them use cannon to rout them snakes from the hideout. Oh, I guess you don't know how far it is to where the army is located. What's more, the army is busy fighting redskins. They got their hands full. It's up to the law to keep men like Brogan subdued. And the law can't do nothing but sit with its fingers crossed. Why, blast your hide, Sheriff. Sheriff, I... ain't there some chance of starving them out? <laughs> they got springs there, ain't they? Can't live forever on water. They got food enough stored there to last them a year. I tell you, Ma, Brogan has made a regular business out of being an outlaw. He's gone from thieving to murder, then to cattle stealing, and to more murder. Now he's organized in such a way that he can attack every town inside a two days' ride of his hideout, and there ain't no force or omen big enough to touch him. He stole the cattle just so he could stampede them and chase the folks into the street when he attacked the town. Where'd that engine go? I see him slip out when I come in. Shucks, I wanted to ask him a few things. He's likely gone to see if there's any more wounds that need taken care of. Get him up! Go! <laughs> Hard riding brought Tonto to a prison camp many miles west of Smith Corners by daybreak. Convicts were already at their work building a bridge and improving a stage trail. Full scout, full. Full scout. Howdy, Redskins. Oh. What's on your mind? Me, Tonto. Where? White friend. Who do you mean? Fella come yesterday. Him make plenty talk. Riding the white stallion? Not right. Well, me and him talked plenty like you say. Then he rid out north here. Him go north? That's right, Injun, north. Hmm. Not go east. No. Was it a go east? Uh, him say him meet Tonto. Uh, him not come. Now that's right, Curious. He asked a heap of questions about these men here. Oh? Wanted to know if they'd done anything real serious. I told him most of them was serving time for deserting the army. Uh. Then while we was talking, a couple of gents come up and they spoke for a time with this hombre that rid the white horse. And the three of them started out north. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Pete Brogan was camped on the trail not far from his headquarters. At the very moment Tonto left the warden, the Lone Ranger, disguised but without his mask, was brought before the outlaw leader. So you picked this hombre up yesterday after we raided the town, eh? That's right, Pete. And we ain't let him get out from under our gun sight since then. We ain't taking no chance with this gent. You're the hombre that was asking so many questions about Pete Brogan, eh? I've learned a lot about you, Brogan. Yeah? Well, I expect you have. <laughs> Folks are talking about me. Maybe you heard it said that I don't keep no prisoners, eh? Yes, I heard that. You spent some time chinning with the warden at the prison camp. I reckon you see what it costs in the way of food and bother to keep prisoners. That's right. It costs a lot. A few well-placed slugs from a six-gunner, there'd be no need of the government feeding all them worthless hombres. What do you want of me? Why are you so interested in my business? 
because I want to find a way to smash you and your gang. Well, <laughs> a right outspoken gent, ain't you? You're running things with a pretty high hand, Pete, but you won't go on much longer. Oh? And maybe you're figuring to stop me. I heard it said that's what was on your mind. Yes, it is. <laughs> pretty big plan. If you can't get the best of two of my men, and not two of the best ones either, just how do you figure on getting the best of the whole pack of us? That can be done, Brogan. Brogan, he's got a pal of some kind that he figures on trailing us. What? Yeah, we figured you'd want to get the pal as well, so that was why we kept quiet when we seen what he was doing. What was he doing? Well, it was yesterday when we got him, you know. We rid all night getting this far. Yeah? He figured we didn't see him, but I did. He blazed a trail. He what? That's right. <laughs> Thought you was putting one over on me, didn't you, stranger? All right, then don't answer. But you see now that Pete Brogan don't have no fools working for him. Take him on to the headquarters, gents. Me and Loomis and Driscoll will go on and ride the back trail, watching out for the friend of his. Right. You can follow it easy enough. You'll see the marks he put on the trees we rid past. Good enough. Come on, boys. Get along there. Get up, Get up there. You're pretty observing, aren't you? <laughs> That's the time you got fooled. So you thought I was blazing a trail, huh? If you wasn't, what was you doing? Never mind that talk. Let's get back to the hideout. You thought you captured me because you were so careful to keep your gun leveled at me. Well, ain't you captured? You said when we started out that you were going to meet Brogan. Well? I wanted to see that man. He's just who I thought he was. Huh? His real name's Karslick. He was in the army when they fought around here, and he deserted. He deserted to avoid arrest and court-martial for selling information to the savages. Ain't you the smarter, though? His own troop would have shot him if he could have been found. Well, ain't nobody going to shoot him now, Savvy. He not only sold out to the Redskins, but he's seen that them same engines got plenty of guns and ammunition, and a couple of cannon as well. And he's made himself a regular fortress in the rocks. He sure has, and you'll see what a real army execution is like when you get there. <laughs> He'll see part of it, up to when the rifles go off. Now get riding, stranger. And he broken to capture my friend? Reckon you and your pal will die about the same time. Now get. Not yet. Hi, Silver. Hey, look out. Get them, boy. Down. Hi there. Get them, boy. At the Lone Ranger signal, the mighty stallion lunged against the nearest of the outlaws. He was nearly knocked from his saddle. Then the big white horse lashed down with his four feet of Sneed. Sneed dodged and fell to the ground. The Lone Ranger sprang at him, fist packed against jaw, and... Uh, oh. The other man was firing blindly as Silver reared and plunged in front of him. Grabbing one of Sneed's guns, the Lone Ranger returned his fire and... Oh, my hand, my hand! Blasted the gun from the killer's hand. Then he pulled the outlaw from the saddle. I want you to! My hand! Come you... over that saddle! Oh, blast you! I'm roping you first! My hand is... Your hand's not hurt. The bullet only struck your gun. Eh, that'll keep your arms down. Blast you! My pals will get you for this. They'll get you if it's the last thing they ever do. You can't get away with this. We'll see about that. Both outlaws were bound tightly and lashed to the trunk of a nearby tree. The Lone Ranger reclaimed his gun belt and strapped it in place. Then he took a mask from beneath his shirt and adjusted it over his eyes. Once again, he became the famous masked rider of the plains. He leaped astride the great horse Silver and shouted, Hail Silver, away! Racing along the trail he had blazed, the masked rider thought only of Tonto's safety. If Brogan gets to Tonto first, he'll make him think we're prisoners. Come on, Silver, old boy. Stretch out those great legs of yours. We've got to let Tonto understand that we're not captured. hi oh Silver, away! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Tonto followed the trail blazed by the Lone Ranger. The Indian rode fast, his keen eye catching the small marks on the trees he passed. Then three men rounded the curve on the trail ahead and... Whoa! Whoa, Scout! Clean up, boys! Get your hands high, Redskin. We hanker to ask you plenty of questions. Who you? I said we'd ask questions, not answer them. You looking for a white friend that's been captured? Huh? You see him? Maybe we have. Are you? Ain't you hunting him? Me want him. That's what we wanted to know. Grab him, boys. What's this? Get a rope around him. Yeah, this will hold him. Make a move and we'll drill you here and now. Now, let's get riding. Lead the Redskins horse for him. Uh, Come on, get up. Get up there. Get up. Suddenly, Tonto ducked low in the saddle. And at the same instant, the three outlaws were dragged to the ground. What the... Got me! What happened? Shoot! Shoot it out! Who wrote this? Keep your hands away from guns. What the... You're covered. You! That voice! That's a Curtis Sneed head captured. Your pals are already roped and waiting for jail. Steady, Scout. Now let me cut loose in just a minute, Kimosabe. You stretched the rope between them trees. Of course I did. That was the easiest way to catch you without giving the chance to fire on Tonto. No. There you are, Tonto. No, Tonto rope them, fella. This will make five of the broken gang to take to the sheriff in town. The jail ain't made that'll hold me. We'll see about that. Put hand hind back. I won't tell you. You do oh, it. My, oh. uh, that better. Uh, make those ropes good and tight, Tonto. Uh, we won't need to use the plan I had in mind to capture the broken outlaws. There ain't no plan that man never made that'll hold me. I'm bigger than the law. The law don't dare hold me. If I ain't let go, my men will wipe out every town around here. The Lone Ranger left the five outlaws in the hands of the sheriff and rode away. He did not realize how completely the Brogan gang had terrorized the district, nor that Brogan would dare to threaten the townspeople who surrounded the jail. Keep me in this jail and you won't have a house left standing. You know what happened yesterday? Well, that ain't nothing to what our outfit will do when they hear I'm a prisoner here. You folks better talk it over and make the sheriff see things right for your own good. Dad, grant it, Sheriff. We can't risk being wiped out. Them prisoners ain't getting loose. I don't know if what the sheriff is wrong this time. Now don't go again, the sheriff. Ain't none of you no spunk. I got a family to think of. I can't afford having my place burned down. Rogan's men will do just what he said. They got a regular army out there in the bad land. I figure we should turn them loose if they make promises to us. I didn't know it calls for deep thinking. It's again all principle. First principle is self-preservation. The crowd was deeply impressed with the outlaws' threats. They realized that the town would be almost helpless against Brogan's well-armed men. And as they talked among themselves, Brogan shouted from the jail, You better let us go right soon or it'll be too late. I'm for letting them go free. Me too. You can't do it, folks. We got five of the gang jailed, and we'll get the rest. Stand aside, Sheriff. Stand to one side. We're turning them loose. Someone get their horses. We'll protect our car. Let other folks do the same. Folks, use your heads. This ain't right. You can't turn the killers loose. It ain't right, I tell you. The Sheriff's arguments were useless. The townspeople stormed the small jail and broke the lock. Brogan promised that the town would not be attacked and the outlaws were set free to mount their horses and ride away. Now remember, you promised to leave our town alone. I got plenty of scores to settle. One of them is with you, Sheriff, for wanting to keep me in jail. Why, you... will hear more of us. Come on, boys. Get up. Get up. You pack of white liver jellyfish. What right have you got to call yourselves men? Now, Ma, we only was Don't trying... you talk to me. You ain't fitting to speak to the dirtiest kind of a polecat. Ain't a man in town with spunk enough to stand for law and order and things that are decent. You got your homes? Sure you got them. And I hope they rot and fall in on your head. No, see here, Ma. Don't you call me more. I wouldn't mother a single one of you. Look at me. Look at me. An old woman that's been living on borrowed time for the past ten years. And look at where one of them killer's bullets grazed me. That is just the start. There'll be more lead flying from the broken gang as a result of letting them snakes go free. All right, Ma, you had your say. I had it, and I'm leaving this town. This is a town that ain't fit to be on the face of a map. Come on, get over! Who's that riding down here? There's a man. There's the masked man that captured five of them. 
and all you lizards put together ain't enough to hold them when they're captured. Oh, oh, the silver trouble. Oh, Come oh, man. Sheriff. Have you let those killers go? I had to do it, stranger. Why? I wanted to hold them, but they talked fear into the rest of the folks here. And they've been released to return to their stronghold? That's right. And I'm quitting Smith's Corners right now. Quitting? That's not your job. Your job is to make this town a fit place to live in. All right, what's to be done? Maybe you ride up to Brogan's Fort, into the teeth of rifles and cannon, and clean them killers out. Is there anyone here who will ride with me? Not me. I will, by ginger. As old as I am, I'll ride with you. I'll go, stranger. Well, I won't. Not me. It's certain death. Ain't a chance of beating them. Two people, one of them an old lady. Your town isn't fit to be saved. But there are other towns to consider. Come on, boy. Where you going? Hell, still. Hey! The Lone Ranger raced away from town and headed back to camp, where he drew Silver to a rearing stop. Back to the original plan, Tonto. Those folks will be taught a lesson. To the saddle. Help me ready. Get him up, Skull. Come on, Silver! working this camp is tough, boys. The warden sure ain't rough on us. It's just being a prisoner for so many years that bothers me. We ain't nothing but a pack of forgotten men. I'm afraid that's what you'll be, Slade, for a good many years to come. Forgotten men. Oh, I didn't see you come up, warden. I'll admit that most of you deserve a better life. There ain't a man in this camp that's vicious or a man that's done anything more serious than to protest against the war. We figured to end the war year before it did end by refusing to carry on the fight. That's all, warden. I know your records. Now, boys, I've come to tell you something. Yeah? If I was in any one of your shoes, I'd almost as soon do anything as live like this. Me too. Suppose there was a chance for you to fight. Is the war started again? It's a different sort of a war now. A war against crooks that have infested the West. The sheriff's to take care of that. But the lawman can't. Boys, maybe some of you have noticed the man on the white horse that was around here. Yeah, well, what did he want? He brought me a special order. Now, I don't know if you'll be needed or not. He's going to let us know. But the thing is, you're going to be offered a chance to win a free pardon. How? Tell us how. Wait, boys. Quiet down a minute. Tell us. Brogan's gang is fortified in the Badlands. He's too well protected for any posse the sheriff can get together to wipe out. Is that the same Brogan that sold out the army? The same. Why? Listen to me. There's horses here to equip you. The same ones you've used for work. Now, there ain't one chance in a hundred for a man to live through an attack on Brogan's stronghold. But if you do, you'll earn your part. Well, <laughs> Hold on, boys. I ain't said yet that you was needed. Of course we're needed. We heard about Pete Brogan. We know his kind. Know that he is skilled in army work. He knows fighting. So do we. This is a different kind of fighting than shooting men the same as us. In some cases, our own relations. Give us a fighting chance to be free men. That's all we ask. Boys, it's most the same as suicide. Warden, we're going. We're going. You can't stop us. We're starting out, boys. Get to your saddle. You take command, Slade. Fears that bugler. This is an attack, boys. It's for freedom or kingdom come. Are you mounted? Yeah. There's the bugle. Follow me, boys. We're heading for Broken's Fort. Get up, boys. The strange army of convicts raced toward almost certain death, driven on by the hope that some would live to become free men. The Lone Ranger rode into the convict camp some time later to learn that the men had already gone. Oh, Silver! Away! Stopping only for a moment at the warden's office, he raced on to be with them when they made their attack. But the hard-riding soldiers had already been sighted by Brogan and his men, and the outlaws opened fire. Time after time, the desperate men stormed the fort, and time after time, they were driven back. Then, just as the outlaws' victory seemed complete, the Lone Ranger raced toward the retreating soldiers. High above his head, he carried the flag, and the red, white, and blue flashed in the moonlight as he shouted, You keep falling back! That's playing right the Brogan's hands! Keep going! Keep going, and some of you will make the fort! They can't stop all of you! I've had enough! Me too! All right, deserters, quit! 
Those of you who are men can follow me. You're riding up there alone, stranger? No, I'm not riding alone. There are a lot of men right here who will follow me. I'm flying this flag from inside that stronghold. Come on, boys. Who'll follow old glory? The flag! Boys, I'm riding with him. Come on, get up there. Hey. Inspired by the flag, the former soldiers thrilled to the task before them. They raced madly up the hill. This time there was no turning back. The Lone Ranger headed into the very teeth of the outlaw fire. The men with him could not be stopped. Many of them took bullets and still kept going. When they gained the crest of the hill, some leaped from their horses, using their rifles as clubs. Others had bayonets. The Lone Ranger still astride the mighty silver was everywhere. Once the walls of the fort had been stormed, the outlaw's defense cracked, and the sharp hand-to-hand struggle was brief. Now, Brogan, you're going back to the prison. Oh, don't take me there. They'll hang me now. And is there anything that's more deserved? You men, you've shown the people of Smith's Corners that men can do. You're going to be granted pardons. Take this flag and keep it flying out here in the country you conquered. We... Well, there, there ain't many of us left. It's up to those of you who are left to make this a sort of country your friends would be willing to give their lives for. That's the foundation of America. I, I asked the bugler, figuring on raising his flag here, if he remembered his calls. He's fixing to sound off. What call? To the colors. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>